This week on Sportsman TV, Umberto Fontova will be cooking up New Orleans-style roast venison po'boys. Captain Charlie Thomason will be targeting oyster beds for speckled trout and redfish. And Greg Hackney will be hitting boat docks for largemouth bass. Come go with us. Hey guys, Ruffin here, coming to you from our new VIP room here at Bowie Outfitters. Today I want to talk to you about Beretta's new 92X Performance Shot Pistol. The 92X is a 9mm pistol built for competition use. It features a solid steel frame, a frame mounted safety, enhanced and oversized controls, adjustable rear sight, front rail, and enhanced trigger. It has a 15 round capacity. So come by Bowie Outfitters today and check it out. What we have here, amigos, is chunks of deer hindquarter. But what happens? Most of us don't do this. What I did is I bone the hindquarter. What do we do? We hang it up, we take the back strap out, and we typically deep fry it, which is great. Nothing wrong with deep fried back strap, I love it. But folks, there's so many other wonderful things we can do. So we'll take the chunks of the hindquarter, we'll bone the hindquarter, with a good boning knife, which is also the great one to use to fillet sheep head. We'll bone it, and then we'll simply cut it into chunks, because what we're gonna do is make, believe it or not, Parkway Bakery, Mother's Restaurant style, roast beef po' boys, except it's with venison. After that, we simply season these chunks of meat that are free from sinew, free from fat, and free from bone. Your favorite Cajun seasoning, you know? We're not hung up on that. I always like, because of my Cuban heritage, the adobo. I always add it. And so what do I do? I mix them up. I mix up the adobo with the local Cajun seasoning. Both of them are heavy on the garlic, which is very good. And then we will simply, we'll take these chunks and put them in a pressure cooker. Brown them and pressure cook them for about 20, 25 minutes ch -ch 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 -ch, until the meat falls apart, flakes apart. We will flake the meat apart. We will thicken the gravy, which is heavy on sweet onion and fresh garlic. Thicken that gravy, we'll pour it on French bread and it's like you're eating at Parkways, except it's the deer you shot that typically you made sausage out of. So we got it kind of sliced, semi-thin, about an inch, inch and a half inch, and seasoned with Cajun seasoning, your favorite. And now we're gonna throw it into the pressure cooker, brown it, sear it. As always happens when you make a soup, we're gonna sear these chunks of venison, hind quarter or fore quarter 
or even back strap. We've pretty much seared them in this pressure cooker in the mixture of olive oil and butter, heavy on olive oil. And now we throw in a lot of diced garlic and sweet onions. As a matter of fact, since the garlic is so important for New Orleans style, roast beef pull boy, roast Bambi pull boy in our case, we can add even more garlic. You know. So we're gonna sear these items, reduce these items down, preferably to where we get the onions caramelized. Good and reduced. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, like the Three Stooges called it. Some wine. In my case, I like Marsala wine. Dry sherry is good. Dry sherry or Marsala, in my experience, works very good for this dish. And we want to just barely cover the meat and the onions with water. So they're almost covered. Now, you can do this in a crock pot, or you can do it in your basic skillet or your basic Dutch oven if you've got four hours, you know. And of course, a lot of us do on weekends at the camp. Hey man, put the beer, the deer smother with onions in the crock pot, smother with onions in the Dutch oven. And man, let's go out fish for a while. And when you come back, so you can do that, but we're doing the quickie version, which is why we use the pressure cooker. So we'll do it here, cover it up, get the pressure cooker rolling good and cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes. As mentioned, amigo, the pressure cooker has done its thing and reduced these gorgeous chunks of venison, hind quarter, or even fore quarter to roast beef size hunks of wonderful onion and garlic imbued meat. But what we'll do is make them even more whole boilable. That's not a word that you find in a lot of cookbooks, but it's what we're gonna do. And how do we do that? Because when you eat a pull boy in New Orleans style, so the meat has to be flaky and tender, where you just juice just runs down your chin. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we take that venison and we smash it up. Look how it flakes apart. Look how it flakes apart. I find that it's better to flake it apart in this manner and make roast beef pull boys, as we will see very shortly. Look at that, the meat's just flaking apart after being in a pressure cooker for 20, 25 minutes. You get the same procedure. You get the same effect if you put it in a crock pot for six hours or in a Dutch oven for four hours. But who's got the time for that nowadays? So what we'll do is put it back into the pot and proceed to thicken the gravy, which is such an important ingredient in a New Orleans style roast beef po' boy, isn't it? Now all we've got to do is thicken the gravy a bit, like we all do, with a little milk and some flour. But what I do, just to spice it up just a little bit, is we add a little bit of that browning seasoning to it, just to make the po' boy a little bit prettier. A little browning seasoning and just a tad more of the Worcestershire sauce. Another dash of Marsala wine as this starts cooking, just for the heck of it. You can't have too much of that. Ooh, look at that gravy. Just look at that gravy. So we'll let that warm up just a little bit there. Okay, amigos, look as we've got the gravy right at about the right consistency for our Bambi Po' Boy Parkway Bakery style 
Oh boy. Creole tomatoes. When they're available. Fortunately, we're making this when they are. And some pickles. You'll notice that I had the bread with mayonnaise on it already. You gotta have the mayonnaise. It adds to the juiciness. Bam! Is this a genuine New Orleans style pool boy? Let us see. It's a part of the deer that you probably have never considered to use in this manner. It's a part of the egg you typically use in form of sausage, and it gets freezer burned. Then you give it to hunters for the hungry and all this stuff. Well, you know something? The hunters that are hungry are me. They're sitting in this camp right now. And these hungry hunters are munching out on Bambi New Orleans style po' boys. The Blue Ice Pack's part of the Chill and Brew series. Now this may be one of the most popular ones because everyone likes a cold beer. If you're heading out to a tailgate and you need to pack up two cases of beer, this is gonna keep it cold all day or until they're gone. Now this works great on the boat. If you're gonna go out and have a day where you need to pack a lot of drinks, this is really what's gonna keep it right at that above freezing temperature. The Chill and Brew series is also good for keeping ice extended. If you wanna put this in with your regular ice, it'll keep it cold longer. So these are good for drinks, waters, sodas, and beer. Shell employs and their families enjoying our Louisiana sportsman's paradise. Louisiana is where we live, and we're proud to call it home. Shell is the rhythm of Louisiana. It's that time of year, CCA Star Tournament time. We might have a star winner, folks. Don't miss your chance for more categories, more prizes, and more smiles. Young and old, there's a division for everyone. You can win a truck, RV, boat, and much more. Sign up today for a chance to become an early bird winner. The fun starts Memorial Day weekend. Visit CCA Star to get your ticket today. All right, anglers, today I'm gonna do something really fun and it's kind of new because what's happened is along the Gulf Coast and especially here in St. Bernard Parish where we're fishing today, oyster fishermen have laid out a lot of rock all in their beds. It's called culch. And what that's done is it's grown new habitats for speckled trout and redfish out in the open areas of the open bays. We're finding slicks, we're finding fish, and we're finding fun. And today, I'm gonna do it with a little sheep pup. I love fishing top waters, and the reason why I'm fishing it is I'm locating fish. It's gonna help me cover a lot of ground really fast and catch a lot of fish. I'm kind of like scouting today, just having a good time fishing. First one. <laughs> All right, now look, what I'm doing is I've got an oyster, I got a whole oyster bed out here. And what I'm what I'm kind of doing is I'm just fan casting as I go along the bank. And I've got the bank behind me and I'm throwing out into the open water. And the reason for that is I want to cover as much of that that whole grounds that these fish might be laying in. And I'm sure what they're doing is they're just sitting on, you know, little pockets of of rocks that are higher or lower where that current kind of comes by. Beautiful speckled trout, first one of the day. Here he is. There he is. There's one. <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you, a lot of times when we're out here, you know, I'm fishing this reef, but I'm coming along this bank and I'm getting a lot of blow ups on the bank, I can hear them. So I came up closer to the bank to see what it is that's hitting. There's a lot of it. We might have to switch our game plan a little bit. That's a small red. Man, these little redfish, 
they are just eating it up on this bank right here. You know, this is just showing the dynamics of this thing. Out here in open water, we've got rocks that have been laid down right up to the bank, and these fish are holding on there, speckled trout all across that, but then up against the bank here along these coves where they've dumped these rocks, the redfish are in here too. So it's really awesome. It's creating their own little ecosystem that is in this area and all the fish are starting to hold on it. Hey y'all, there's some, <laughs> there's some redfish, few of them, up on this bank right here. They're tailing, they're, you know, their backs are coming out of the water, they're getting right up on that bank. I've thrown a top water over there like 20 times and it won't bite it. I'm gonna try to trick them with this. Mirror lure, soft plastic. There he is. Oh, nice red. I'm telling y'all, oh, oh, I love catching these things in this type of situation. You know, they're eating these plastics a lot better than top water. But I want to tell you, I'm going to go back to top water because I like top water fishing so much better. Oh man, but this is awesome. He ate this bait. Look at that beautiful fish. Oh man, that is one gorgeous fish right there. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all, this is awesome. Let me slide my top water out of the way. I'm about to use that again. Come here, big boy. Come here. I wore him down, he wore me down. I'll tell you, this fish right here, I know we edited it out and everything, but I'm gonna tell you, this fish right here, he fought like crazy. I was fighting him forever. Man, get it, and he swallowed that bait too. That just shows how aggressive these fish can be on certain baits. I mean, the top water, I love fishing top water and I'm gonna fish it, but they're more aggressive on these plastics. I just wanna fish top water. Man, he really, this isn't a top mm, part of his mouth, but man, he was really in there. That's just so awesome. Look at that fish, y'all. <laughs> you can not believe how awesome this is. And you can replicate this. It's very easy. Just get out here, look for these oyster leases. Oh man, I gotta get at least one more in that top water before I head out. See you later, buddy. Oh, oh man, I just love it. I can see some other ones running now. Oh man, that's a good fish. It's just, uh, it's so exciting to be able to come out here and understand that, you know, these, these oyster culturing systems that they're putting out now to grow more oysters due to the BP oil spill, what's happened is, is that it's just created a ton, I mean a lot of just new habitat for all of these fish. Oh man, that fish, I mean that is just textbook, just awesome fishing, catching redfish, catching speckled trout today. Tons on top water. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better. Look at that, that's so awesome. Oh man, I'm gonna have to watch out with him getting him with the top water. I think I'm gonna use my net for this one. I'm scared of those top water hooks. Oh, come on, big boy. Oh, he's trying to jump out the net. That is just so awesome. Look at that, that mirror lure, and that's a sheep pup. I went with a smaller top water today because I wanted something that was a little bit smaller profile to kind of match the hatch out here. There's a lot of small, there's a lot of small mullet in the water and I could have thrown a regular she dog or any of those, but I decided to throw this, which is a little bit, a little bit smaller bait. It'll give me a little bit, you know, just not a bigger profile. It'll just, it'll just go back and forth real quiet. Won't spook the fish just like him. He couldn't pass it up. He wanted that thing. It's a beautiful fish too. He's got spots all over him. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> I love it. This is so awesome. Top water fishing, fishing oyster reefs, going along and you just never know what's gonna happen. So if you go out, you know, anytime during, I would say the summer month is when that's gonna be the most productive or going into the fall. Fish these new oyster leases that these guys are putting the cults down, which is the crushed concrete you see everywhere. And these redfish and speckled trout will be waiting for you. And that is your coastal concept.
Hey guys, Ruffin here, coming to you from our new VIP room here at Bowie Outfitters. Bowie Outfitters is now offering cleaning services for all your firearm needs. Whether it's your duck hunting shotgun, your deer hunting rifle, your basic pistol, your carry guns, your AR-15s, 22s, whatever it is, we can clean it up for you, get you back in tip top shape. We don't have a gunsmith service, so we can't offer any repairs, but any of your basic cleaning needs and re we can do all that in the store. So come by Bowie Outfitters today for all your firearm cleaning needs. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. The Purple Pack is the Tundra series. This is the coldest of the cold. You want to use this for shipping meats, anything frozen, it will keep it frozen. It gets down to about five degrees Fahrenheit. Even if you want to bring ice cream out to the beach where it's 95 degrees, this will keep it frozen. This isn't going to be your everyday use ice pack because it will actually keep what you have on top of it frozen or freeze something that's not frozen. It gets down so cold that it actually keeps things in that hard frozen state. So you don't want to put your sandwiches or your soft foods on here because it'll actually freeze them. We rise at 4 a.m., driven by an overwhelming passion. We're driven by the beasts that roam the waters of this great country. We don't think about stress or bills or Monday. We're fishermen, always ready. And as for the gear we hold, trust is everything. Never again should you sacrifice strength for style. The Team Lose Pro TI Speed Spool. Built for anything you set the hook on. As sportsmen, we seek out the very best craftsmanship in many aspects of what we do. We take great pride in the work we put in because we want the very best results possible. Those same philosophies are how we do things at Smith Shanklin Sosa Law Firm. We craft each case to the individual needs of our client, and we take pride in our work to protect your rights. To schedule a free consultation, just give us a call at 225-223-6333. In this segment of Sportsman TV, Greg Hackney is fishing boat docks for largemouth bass. Hackney knows that boat docks provide an ideal habitat for fish. Boat docks are a thing that any bass fisherman has to learn to fish. And Hackney has some great tips on how to reap the rewards. Uh, well, you know, they give the fish a lot of cover, shade. The other cool thing about boat docks, like especially on these lakes, are that they give the fish a lot of option depth-wise. You know, some of these docks on this lake, you know, they start in two foot, they go out to 15. So the fish can start on one end and move back and forth. You know, they never have to leave the boat dock. Boat docks are something that everybody's got to get used to fishing because they're here to stay and there are more boat docks now on lakes than ever before. I mean, I can remember even fishing the lake that we're on right now when it had a few boat docks, but not many. And so boat docks are a thing that, you know, every, a bass fisherman has to, has to get a, get to like them. They're a little more trouble. Just just say that all the fish are shallow on the dock. Well, then you fish that part of it, and then you got to go all the way around to get to that part of the. And it's sometimes it's a little time consuming, but very rewarding. You basically fish boat docks with the same lures you would fish other stuff with. It's just each day varies. The swim jig perfect right now. You know these fish are up chasing bait, so I want something that it's staying up in the water column right now. You know, and there'll be other days when they're down on the bottom and you know, a jig, a tube, a, a rodent. You know, in the summertime, especially on some of these deep docks, I like a deep diving crankbait, like a Series 5 or a 5XD, a big worm like an anaconda. You know, in the, hot, the hottest part of the year. The same boat dock that's good in the fall can also be good in the spring or in the dead of the summer. But typically, it's just the way the fish is relating to it is different. Like I said, there'll be days when the fish are in the, on the two foot end and there'll be other days that they're only two foot deep, but they're out on the very deepest end of the boat dock because that's where the shad are coming by and they're just using the, setting up on the boat dock, you know, ambushing. Uh, well, you know, basically I'm just targeting underneath the dock, around the uh, pilings. You know, this particular lake where the water doesn't fluctuate much, you know, most of the time boat docks will be piers, you know, and have, uh, you know, either metal or wood pilings in the water. And so, uh, 
you know, I'm just fishing over the cross members. And, uh, you know, one thing about swimming a jig, you can fish at a pretty high rate of speed. You know, I'm not swimming the jig down deep. I'm keeping it in sight. And uh, I'm really just making, you know, uh, short pinpoint casting, you know, and I get in the right situation, I can skip that jig under there or I'm pitching it under there, whatever, whatever it takes to get it under there. And the main thing I do when I'm swimming a jig is that when that jig hits the water, you want it moving. You don't let it sink any, you know, if, if that makes sense. You, like the instant it stops and it gets where you want it, you immediately want it. And a lot of times what will happen in that situation, you can get a reaction bite that way. Now, this is just a quarter ounce hack attack heavy cover swim jig. This one looks pretty rough because it's been pretty beat up. You know, rod choice for me, uh, this is my 7.2 swim jig rod. It's a little bit shorter, but you know, when I'm skipping them boat docks, I like a rod that I can roll cast, you know, because the deal when I'm swimming a jig is mostly a casting deal. It's not like I'm, you know, plinking and pitching to targets. You know, I'm skipping that jig under those limbs, under back up under those boat docks. And I like that little bit of shorter rod with shorter handle allows me to make those casts. Uh, this is a loose custom pro, again, 50 pound gamma braid and uh, high speed reel, it's an eight three to one. Now, a lot of times when I'm swimming a jig like that, sometimes it's on the reel. Like a lot of times when I get out in open water, I'll just steady retrieve. But when I'm around the, that cover, I like to shake that jig. And I'm basically using the rod and, and I got it coming forward and I'm using the reel to pick up the slack. And the reason for that is I'm slowing, I, it's an erratic presentation, but I'm slowing that jig down and leaving it in there a little longer. Because so this is the deal, when I skip it in on that boat dock, maybe that fish is five or six, 10 foot away. And by slowing that jig down, slowing that presentation, but keeping it moving erratically, I'm drawing that fish to it. So if I'm covering a lot of water, I, a lot of times I'll do that. Now when I'm throwing directly to a target a lot of times, the only time I do that is right when I come by. Piece of wood, I'm agitating. I'm trying to get that fish, you know, I'm making that bait, that swim jig erratic to get him to come out there. Now, when you're in heavy cover, there, a lot of times there's no reason to do that. You basically can just reel it and bump the cover. Really, the whole key for me on a swim jig is having the right trailer. Now, <clears throat> because we're on the lake in the south where the fish are feeding on a bigger bait, you know, a rage crawl is the number one choice. I'll sometimes go to a menace grub, which is also has two appendages, but it's a smaller profile and it could be either be a situation where I think the fish are feeding on a smaller bait or I'm around smaller fish and I, I'm taking that big fish equation out of it. Uh, but number one choice for me 95% of the time, a rage crawl. And I basically just match, you know, whatever color swim jig I'm using, I match it with a, a matching rage crawl. And, and honestly, a rage crawl is one of those few trailers that you basically can just throw it out there and reel it in and the trailer will catch the fish for you. You basically don't have to do anything. But again, when I'm around heavy cover, I like to shake that swim jig a little bit because I'm trying to draw that fish out.